Washington and Havana have had a strained relation since Fidel Castro seized power in 1959. Castro proceeded to align Cuba with the Soviet Union and nationalized U.S. companies. In retaliation, the U.S. closed its embassy in Havana and imposed an arms embargo. The Kennedy administration imposed a trade embargo in 1962. By UN estimates, the ongoing sanctions have cost the Cuban economy around 130 billion in lost trade with the United States. A historic thaw in U.S.-Cuba relations began in December 2014 under President Barack Obama. Washington reopened its U.S. embassy in Havana. Both countries made efforts towards normalizing relations. In 2017, newly elected President Donald Trump ended the short-lived thaw, imposing new sanctions on the island and returned Cuba to Washington's blacklist of alleged state sponsors of terrorism. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris kept most of Trump's sanctions in place. Political commentators here don't expect much improvement from either candidate, but they hold out hope that Kamala Harris could chart a new course. I see the possibility that Harris might like to move in the direction of Obama's policy and separate herself on the, on the, uh, from the uh, Biden policy, which many people argue it's a continuation of the Trump policy. Although Cubans remain pessimistic about significant change in Washington's Cuba policies, many people here are still paying close attention to the outcome of the November 5th election. Luis Chirino, CGTN, Havana.